Hello everyone, my name is Abigail Glover and this video is for Fluent Project 2 for Dr. Osbey's course on fluid mechanics for the spring 2023 semester. So as you can see, I already have my workbench pulled up here. I'm just going to start by going over to the toolbox and clicking and dragging Fluid Flow Fluent. We're just going to single click onto Geometry and change this from 3D to 2D. And then we're going to right click and open up Design Modeler. So now that we have our Design Modeler pulled up, I'm just going to get my axes brought up. For this case, I am going to be doing the 30 degree inclined plate. So we need to start by drawing our plate. I'm going to go over here to sketching. I'm going to do a rectangle by three points. And real quick, I'm also going to change my units from meter to centimeter. So now we have our rectangle. We want to make sure it's the proper dimensions. And for this project, we were given the specifications of a thickness of 0 0.1 centimeters. and the length of 30 centimeters. So now that we have our length set up, we want to make sure that we have the correct angle. And this part can be tricky here. So what I'm going to do is, because I couldn't get it in between here, I'm just going to set my angle at 150 degrees, because that'll be 180 minus 30 degrees. So it'll give us that 30 degree angle in here. Now, I'm just going to draw a large rectangle around this, and we're going to set the lengths. For this, in each case, I used a rectangle that was 500 by 500. I did mess around with the lengths um, just to see what kind of differences it would make, but 500 by 500 was the easiest for me. And I centered the system. So now if we zoom out, you can see our square in this case and our little system in there. So now we are ready to turn this into a surface. And generate. So now in this, uh, in any of the cases, because our system is so small, we want to just zoom in and make sure that it's not grayed out inside. If it is grayed out, that means that one of your edges is not completely closed. And we do want it to be completely closed in this case because it is a solid plate that the fluid cannot move through. So now that we've got this all set up, we can go ahead and move on to meshing. So now our sketch is pulled up into our meshing. We're just going to go over here to the tree, click mesh, and we're just going to generate an automatic mesh. Now you can see that you kind of lose the plate when you do this. It's highlighted here, but if you're just looking at it, it's all just completely a grid. So we want to um, fix that. So now to try to get that feature back, we're going to go to the sizing portion of the details of the mesh. We're going to select no for mesh defeaturing. 
And then we're going to generate that mesh again. So now we've kind of got some funky lines going on over here. Um, if we zoom in, this is where our 30 degree plate is going to be. So that's where that's coming in. Um, I want to select my surface body so that I can try to get in here to go ahead and name components of the system. I'm going to select edge select from up here. I'm going to zoom in. Right click and create a new selection. Now we're going to zoom out so that we can also name the outer body. Now, if we go over here, we can actually see all of our named selections and where they're located. Which is perfect. So now we're going to go back to the mesh and we're going to refine this. So we're going to start by coming up here to the mesh tab and we're going to add an inflation under geometry. We're going to select the entire face plate. And we're going to select apply. And then for the boundary scoping method, we're going to use geometry and select all of the inner parts of the body. We're going to make sure that we're on the edge selection again. And we're going to hit control so that we can select all of them. Apply, looks like I am missing an edge. So now it's showing four edges, and that's what we want. We're also going to change the maximum layers to five, and then we're going to generate. So now when we zoom out and we select mesh, we can see we've got these nice corners around our plate. We want to be able to keep those corners to so define our mesh a bit more. And then we're going to go to method. Going to select the face plate. We're going to hit apply. We're going to change it from quadrilateral dominant to triangles. And then we're going to generate that. So now we can see it's changed to this. And then after that, we are going to go to sizing. We're going to go back to our edge selection. And we're going to select all four edges of the end body again. We're going to select apply. We've got our four edges showing up here. 
For our element size, we are going to change it to one e to the negative three. And then we're gonna select no for capture curvature and change the behavior from soft to hard. After that, we're gonna generate. And when you select mesh again, you can see it's a much finer mesh around that plate now. So now we're gonna go back to sizing. We're gonna do the same thing, except this time we're gonna do the inlet and the outlet. Got our two edges selected. We're gonna change the element size in this case to 0 0.1. And we're going to do the same thing. Capture curvature is going to go to no, and the behavior is going to go from soft to hard. Now, if we look at our mesh, this is what we've got going. Um, you can keep it like this, or you can refine the mesh a bit more. Um, but this is looking great for our case, so we are good to go with that. We can move on to the next step. We're just going to update that real quick. We should get the little green check mark. And now that we've got our check mark, we can go into setup. For our setup, we're going to do double precision and we're going to do four solver processes. So now that we have our solver process up, we just want to make sure that it defaults to pressure-based and steady. We're good to go there. So we can go ahead and change our model from viscous SST K omega to K epsilon to equations. We're also going to change our near wall treatment from standard wall to enhanced wall treatment. And we're going to add on those pressure gradient effects. We can see that it changed here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all of the stipulations for our fluid are correct. Now, in this case, in the handout, we were given that our density should be 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. And instead of our viscosity being 1.7894 to the negative 5, we're going to change that to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. We're going to change and create and close that out. Okay. Um, just like the last one, we can double click here just to make sure that our material is air. That's good to go, so we don't have to change anything. Then we're gonna look at our boundary conditions. Primarily, we're gonna be looking at the inlet, which is gonna be this side over here. And we're gonna change the velocity to 15 meters per second. Again, that was given in the handout. We're going to apply and close. And then there's nothing else we need to do for the internal, for the outlet, anything like that. Um, you can see here our walls, just double check. We've got our front, lower, rear, and upper wall. That all looks great. So now from here, we can double check our reference values and make sure that everything carried over. I'm going to compute from the inlet, and our reference zone is going to be the surface body. We can see that our density is 1.2 and our viscosity is 1.8, just like we did. Now, we are going to change the length to 0 0.3, since this is in meters. And then we're also going to change the area to 0 0.3. So just to double check, we've got our area as 0 0.3, our length is 0 0.3, and everything else carried over. So we are good to go. From there, we're going to double click methods. Our scheme is going to be simple. Our pressure is going to be presto. And instead of second order upwind for momentum, we're going to use first order upwind. Don't need to change anything here. But we do want to go up here. and change our residuals.
Once we have that changed, we're going to go to report definitions. We're going to do a new force report and we're going to do that for drag. And here we're going to select all of our zones and we're calculating the drag force rather than the drag coefficient. Now we're ready to initialize. And we can see our iterations down here for the initialization. Now that our initialization is done, we are ready to run the calculation. We're going to double click here and we're going to change our number of iterations from 0 to 1500. And then we're going to calculate. So now our calculation is complete. We can see our drag report here as well as our scaled residuals. From here, we're ready to move on to our results, but we're not going to close out this tab. We're just going to minimize it and double click results. So from here, we're going to start by making a new contour and then this out the pressure contour. Put our location to be symmetry one. Our variable is going to be pressure, and then I'm just going to change this to 110. So we can see our pressure contour here. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning up on the legend. Um, I'm going to make it fixed. And I'm going to change it to just the variable. So that looks much nicer now. I'm just going to unclick our pressure contour and we're going to create a new contour. This one is going to be our velocity contour. We're going to have the same location symmetry one, but instead of pressure being our variable, we're going to do velocity and we're going to change the number of contours back to 110 and apply. So we've got our velocity contour here. It's looking pretty good from here. I'm going to go ahead and make the vector contour. So I'm going to deselect velocity contour. Let me go up here. And we'll just clean it up. Same thing, our location is going to be symmetry one. And I don't think we need to change anything else. So we're just going to go ahead and apply. You can zoom in, you can really see those vectors. So now that we have our velocity contour, um, our pressure contour and our vector contour. We're going to go back to our other tab and we're just going to get some more data on what this produced. So we're going to go to results. We go down here to reports. We're going to go to forces. We select all of our inner body walls and we're going to click print. And then down here, we can actually see oops, our pressure forces, our viscous forces, um, our coefficients, and all that fun information. From there, the 30 degree angle case is complete, and we've gotten all that we need to, to write a report. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Um, but that's it for project two. We're just doing a single case. Once again, this is the 30 degree case.